My job takes me to farms and ranches all across America, but this time I'm on a bit of a ranching vacation. Hi, I'm Paul Ryan, and welcome to America's Heartland, and welcome to the vast Zapata Ranch located here in South Central Colorado. More than 100,000 acres of horses, cattle, and bison, and intensive conservation efforts to preserve it and you can come and experience it all. And we'll have a lot more from here a bit later. But first, one of the things you may learn about here is branding. And of course, this is how they track their stock. And that takes us to our first story in Oregon, how they are tracking a harvest from the ocean as it goes from the sea to your table. You won't find tractors or combines bringing in this harvest. Seafood, pulled from the cold waters of the Pacific and destined for dinner tables in the U.S. and overseas. This is Pacific Seafood in Warrington, Oregon. And here, as in many areas of the heartland, the question of food quality has taken on a much higher profile. So here, from ship to shore to store, each piece of fish is tracked. Whenever I go out to restaurants, I always want to make sure that, you know, that they're a customer of ours if I can. I always ask, and I know that it's going to be the highest quality. Craig Ernest says news stories about salmonella in poultry, E. coli in produce, and contamination from products overseas have prompted consumers to be more demanding about where their food comes from. So beginning with catches just in from the ocean, Pacific Seafood begins a detailed tracking system to deliver that kind of information. It allows us to track our product that we sell to our, our consumer back to the vessels, which is a very important food safety feature with the current regulatory environment. Yeah, Jim Copenhaver is a shrimper who works the waters off Oregon and Washington. He believes that tracking the catch provides protection for him as well as consumers. One benefit of this system is they can track product coming off individual boats from the time that it was caught till the time that it's in the marketplace. So if there was a specific problem with a certain batch, they, they could get right to the source of it instantly. A generation back, tracking like this would not have been possible. But Jerry Bover says thanks to technology, the company and consumers have detailed information. All right, so we have a big load of fish that's just come off the truck. Tell me what happens. What's the first step? Well, the fish received with ice. We got true caught here. We're going to be putting that on the line next. Obviously, the filets are going to cut many kinds of fish today, probably 15 or 20 species. So we have true cod being de-iced. It'll go up this conveyor, and we'll actually weigh every pan of fish. Right now, they're finishing up with Dover sole. Those bins weigh about 50 pounds each. As each bin comes off the scale, it gets its own tracking tag. If a recall happens, how do officials know where this big guy came from? Well, that's where this tracking tag tells them all they need to know. That includes the individuals who fillet the fish. As it passes through their hands, their workflow shows up on the tag. So each pan of fish is presented to a filleter. They'll pull a pan off, do the cutting. Obviously, they're yielding the fillets. That tag is going to go back into their pan of fillets along with their ID tag. So they have a tag that shows their name, and that's going to identify how long it took to cut this pan, what its yield was, because we know the weight of the raw product, and we'll also know the name of the fillets when we weigh the stuff at the other end. What happens at this station? Well, Carrie here is getting the finished fillets coming down from the filleters, and she's going to take those two tags put the fish on the scale, which is going to give her the weight automatically, scans the two tags, and that filet has just been credited for the fish that they cut today. The fish then moves on, packed and tracked. The packers here have weighed 10 pounds in their pan, and then he'll slip that pan of filets into a bag. Then we'll vacuum seal it. All we're doing is trying to protect the environment of that, of that particular filet. We'll put a label on every single box that they're packing. So down to the lowest level of inventory, any customer who gets this box tells us the ID on that box will then allow us to track it all the way back to the vessel. By building quality control into each step of the seafood's journey, there is greater oversight on product safety, something the company considers important to future business. Quality is 
big time in this business. I mean, if you have a reputation for quality, you get the customers. It allows me to concentrate on what I'm good at doing. And uh, it allows them to concentrate on what they're good at doing. The average American eats about 17 pounds of seafood each year, and sales at home and abroad are a multi-billion dollar industry. Staying current with technology to ensure food safety is something consumers are expected to demand more of in the future. Part of the culture of our company is that change is going to be constant and that stagnation is declining. And our production control system that we're looking at is always under constant improvement, constant changing, looking for ways to better the system. While there are some 25,000 identified species of fish on Earth, it's believed there may be as many as 15,000 species not yet categorized. And that slimy feel you get when you pick up a fish is because fish secrete a type of mucus, which helps to protect them from parasites and lets them move through the water faster.